These are the last 60 days of the year. Is it your last 60 days of your career? This is your first day in real estate, and I am your real estate sales trainer and coach, James Festini. And this is the program that's going to teach you how to sell more real estate in less time. Are you ready for the final push? Because it's coming up on the last two months of the end of the year. We are about to get the trick-or-treating out of the way. And from this moment forward, everybody you talk to is going to start telling you, not right now, not right now. Maybe after the holidays, maybe after the new year, maybe next spring. So you've got to be prepared for this. However, there is still a strong probability that you could get a listing and a sale before the end of the year. It is not totally out of the realm of possibility. And here's how I know this. Because I can go to my MLS right now, and I'm going to encourage you to do this just for your own sanity, for your own uh, inspiration. I want you to go right now into your MLS and say, just your city. For example, my city is your Belinda. I want you to go in there and say, just for my city, just for a number of uh, uh, something to show me it's possible. Okay? Because a lot of people, you know, even me. I've been doing this since 1993. And what I would do is I would think right around November, I would say to myself, literally, I would say, I'm no longer going to get a listing. I just don't feel like it's going to be possible. Every time I sell a house, I always think that's a weird feeling. But I think it, it, that was it. I'm never going to do this again. It just doesn't seem realistic that we get paid and that we can work, but that we can enjoy the work, that the pay is so good for work that that we can do. You know, I, I put in a lot of hours. I put in a lot of effort especially right now with all of the commission stuff being under attack and the, I don't even go into the news cycle about that stuff because my opinion is I don't have an opinion. I don't know what the future brings, but I do know what I can do right now. I can go into my city and I can say how many active listings and how many are pending and that's it, right? And how many are closed? Let's just say active, pending, closed, uh, expired, withdrawn, canceled. The real time stats. In your MLS, you should be able to create a hot sheet and say, what is that magic number? If that magic number, meaning what does it shoot out? It shoots out three for sale, two pending, and one you know, that, that's active. That you see that. And every day when you go in, I want you to print this. We're talking paper, wasted. It's important that you print sometimes so you can hold it and see it. I want you to go into your MLS and I want you to see that magic number. And then tomorrow morning, I want you to print it again and say, there's one more. There's two more. There's zero. But this one went into escrow. You are going to see that just in your town, not globally or some outside here in your town, it happened. If it was zero, if it's at zero listing, zero sales, zero uh, into escrow, then you can say, Okay, James, there's zero. Well, if that's the case, then wait for tomorrow. <laughs> it doesn't happen every day. Sometimes there's a Sunday or a Saturday where nothing happens. Maybe your town is moving slowly. But what I'm going to encourage you to know this deep in your heart is that you don't have any other choice. You have to look for, even if it's just the little things that can give you a glimmer of hope for this last push of the end of the year that you can say to yourself, it is possible because other people are doing it. I would often do that, say to myself, that's it. I would, uh, so oops, I would start creating my calendar. I would start, I, I would start forming next year's game plan, thinking that it's over. When in fact, what usually end up, ends up happening is that I speed up because I continue working, I'll start door knocking more often. I know that right now, because people are gonna start saying, not right now, after the new year, the ones that are motivated, because we're talking, I've been talking about, mo we're talking about the scales or degrees of interest or not interested, interested and motivated. Those are the three kinds of people that we are gonna run into. We're gonna run into the people who are not interested, who tell us no. There's gonna be people who are interested that say maybe, or they're curious, always curious. Those are the, those are the 195 million uh, monthly active users that are on uh, Zillow's website <laughs> that say they're interested, but then the ones that are motivated, those are the four or five million that transact. And what we need to do is we need to sort through all of the millions, hundreds of millions in the US and Canada or wherever you guys are listening to me from, 
sort through those ones who are definitely not and look for the ones who are interested and collect as many of those interested ones so that you can follow up with those. If they're curious, if they're anything and interested could be in your sphere of influence. You now have an opportunity to tap into collecting more interested people. And I promise you, the more interested people you are creating, loading into your database that goes from nothing to something, you will find that the individuals who go from nothing to something of interest are in fact capable of doing something within the next two months. I remember just last year, I thought, man, I want to get one more sale. I want to get one more sale. And I didn't have any list. I, all my listings were already in escrow, so I couldn't hold any open houses. I, I had a couple of them, and I, but I had nothing. Like you can't, the, the lemon was already squeezed, right? You can't hold the open house on there. You could advertise, but you wait. I want to do something a little more active, even though open house was passive. So I found an investor who was doing a flip and they had a vacant house. And I said, hey man, you, you, what are you doing with that place? He goes, well, you know, it's still for sale, but nothing's happening. I said, can I, you mind if I hold an open house on that thing? It was like one and a half million. I went and held an open house two days in a row, a Saturday and a Sunday. I picked up a listing who was actually, who, who signed a contract. I picked up a listing who signed a contract like a week and a half later. It was in December and I picked up a buyer for that investment. And the funny thing about that, that flip was that the buyer who came in said, James, we actually called the owner slash investor and said, Hey, we're interested in writing an offer, but we wanted to write it for X amount of dollars. And that investor said, man, they, he blew, he, this investor blew them off. And I said, you know what? I know the investor. Let me, let me write it for you. Right? <laughs> no problem. I'll write it for you. So I wrote it up and I went to the uh, investor flipper and I go, Hey, this, is, and the, it, he did at first reject it. But then I went in there and I said, here's why here's this. And because a negotiation was possible, that's why people need real estate agents. Hello. Again, going back to the attack on, you know, buyers, agents and commissions and offerings. Had I not, had I not represented them as a buyer, bringing them to that investor, they would not have bought that house. They bought the home. I got him into escrow. It was a 15 day close. The seller was happy. The buyer was happy. And I got one more closing at the tail end of the year because I, I knew it was possible. People were still making deals. Of course, the interest rates were better then. So we do have obstacles in front of us, but what are those obstacles? My friends, I'm going to remind you that the obstacles that you have in your head are only because you're more capable and more, uh, synchronized to media than you ever have been. You see, in 93 to 2007, 8, 9, I didn't have something in my hands that told me things were bad or good. It wasn't even until 2016 that I even got curious about politics. I just avoided all of that, like the plague. And in 2020, like the plague, I became very interested, but it, it started getting in my head. And I lost sight of what was possible because I thought and focused on the things that made it seem like it wasn't possible instead of, I don't want to say burying my head in the sand, but keeping my horse blinders on and not paying attention to who was in office and what they were doing and what the rates were. You couldn't tell, I couldn't tell you uh, in 2006, if you said, who is the president? I could have told you vice president, probably not. I couldn't tell you for sure who was the governor, even when, or, or it's embarrassing. My wife says it's embarrassing for me to have me say this, but when Arnold Schwarzenegger was the uh, governor of California, I didn't even know. And I'm a fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger's movies. No clue what he was up to because I was working. I was selling real estate. It didn't affect me. And although you smart Alex like to say all of it affects you, if it affects you, then go ahead and do what you're going to do. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And I'm going to not let it affect me because I don't have time. I can witness in real time with real things, not the internet that gives me fake news and fake information. And really, even if some of it is real, it's real bad. It's not helpful. Consuming content is not helpful. My content, fine, it's helpful. It's encouraging and it's inspiring. But can you find a way to only get that? Sure. You can subscribe to YouTube, uh, turn on your icons, your notification, uh, make sure that you get alerted when I put on a new video and delete everything else, unsubscribe from everyone else. And when you open up an app like that, you say, I'm going to go watch this and I'm getting out. Commit before you do it. That way you can stop the negativity. 
Focus on what's happening right now. Focus on the next 60 days and see what is possible by looking at your city and saying, what is happening in my community? Are there listings? Are there sales? Then it's possible. How do you get closer to it? Right? This is what you want to know, James, but how do I get closer to it? You know what I'm going to say, prospecting. You can go out right now, the best time of the year, in my opinion, because the weather is nice and crisp. Everyone's a little busy, but they're more pleasant. Uh, many times people think that for some reason I get uh, insulted a lot or that I get put down a lot at the door or on the phones, that it bothers me to get yelled out on the phones or hung up on on the phones. Very rarely do I get nasty people on the phones. They just hang up incredibly rare that I get a nasty person at the door and they just close the door. Big deal. It's not the first time someone's closed the door. What do you have to understand though? These are some of the variables in your road to success. Any business that has any income to be made will inevitably have its share of rejection and pain, adversity, it's just the way it is. If you open up a pizza parlor, someone's going to tell you your pizza sucks. If you open up a, a shoe store, someone's going to say your shoe is dirty, right? The, the front door. The, no one's, you can't please everyone, but you can please yourself. You can make yourself happy by doing the things that make you feel complete, like you're doing something towards the growth of your business. What makes me feel better when I consume too much because I'm guilty of the same thing. I consume too much. What makes me feel better is going out there and knocking on the doors and saying, hi, my name is Aging with Company and I was wondering if you had any interest in selling your house. The pleasant person, which is most of the time, will say, no, I'm not interested. The pleasant person sometimes, well, I would say out of every 100 doors, 25 of them will open. Out of 25 doors that open and I speak to them, at least three to five of them at this time of year, I can get them to respond with a reluctant no that says, no, not right now, nah, not really. To which I say my script, if you've studied it, go to jamesfestini.com forward slash scripts and grab it there. And all I do is ask him a follow-up question. You think maybe later down the road he'd reconsider, perhaps in the spring or in the summer, if the prices are right? They will say maybe. So we get those people who are interested, get a pool of people, a database of people who are interested. It, I have a database of 900, 1,000 people who are interested. Now all I have to do is follow up with them to find out who is motivated. I have to follow up with a database of people who are interested to find out who is motivated. And once they're motivated, I can close for an appointment. It's really not that hard right now. The last 60 days, commit to yourself. 2024 is not going to be much easier. Or is it? See, I say that because I'm interpreting the outside influences. But had I not known that that was a possibility, all I would know in my blissful ignorance is that I pick up the phone, I generate leads, and if they say maybe, I put them into a follow-up campaign and I follow up with them. And if I don't get a lead that day, then I know today for me was not the most productive day. It doesn't affect the future, it doesn't affect the past. All we have control over right now, the only thing we have control over right now is being able to, to condense the information right now to refine the information we have right now about what we cannot take uh, take charge and change, all right? That God grant me the uh, serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Meaning the outside influences don't make a difference. This last two months, what will make a difference is if you go out and knock on the doors, pick up the phones, I would encourage you, if you don't know how to do any of this, right now is the best time to get my one-on-one -on -one coaching because I'll show you, I'll we'll put together the tools. You'll go into hibernation and you'll come out a beast because you will have the information, every piece of tool and software that you need to just go out there and connect with someone, put them into a database and follow up. That's all this business is. Any top producing agent will tell you it's about their database. These last two months of the year, is about building your database. All you need to do, all you need to do is believe that you can. And it's totally possible. The only way you can confirm that belief, if you want the easy route, print your MLS out and see that it's possible. If you want the real work route, 
print your MLS, see what's possible, and then get up, tie your shoes, and walk out the door and knock on the first door uh, to the right of your house and keep going until you can't walk anymore. Then sit back down at your desk and call as many people as you can until 8 p.m. And I promise you, you will have at least two to three conversations. If you use my script, you will I will guarantee you, you will generate at least three to five names and numbers in your area that you're interested in working and getting the listings. You will get them here in a database and you will say, these people actually say, I get this call. Oh, that's my, the, you know, the, 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 my favorite part about the coaching and training is when people reach out and say, James, you inspired me to go door knock and I got a listing. Uh, and I say, w imagine that. You really think that I'm telling you something that wouldn't work? I have to be held accountable. I'm the guy who goes live stream on YouTube. I'm the one who has to be held accountable. Hold yourself accountable. And accountability is only to produce results. If you want real results, take my script, walk out the door and ask those two or three questions, simple in and out, and we're done. If you don't have the tools to leave at the doorstep, Hire me, we'll build the tools, print them in your home office, and you're out. If you don't know what to do after that, hire me as a one-on-one -on -one coach. We'll, we'll put it together. My students are generating leads. I'm, I, I set out to create a system that once we go two or three rounds of my coaching, you're on your own now. I mean, I get people who come back, and I've had people for years, but at the end of the day, I, I fix it, right? It's like having a therapist for six, seven, ten years. Like, how bad were you? All you need to do is fix the few things that you already have going on right now. You know you're at the edge of success or failure. This business is killing you because you're not willing to do the work. You thought it was working. It looked like work, but it wasn't working. So now you actually know and you've known all along. Everybody has told you, go knock on the doors and go talk to the people and you've done everything else. But now there are in fact less. I have to accept that there are less. When I look at my total at the end of the year, I say, okay, there's something different here. But what does that mean? It just means I could work harder. I could have a be honest and say, have I really been working as hard as I could? I could honestly say probably not. So couldn't I step it up more? Isn't it possible that with more work, you can get more results? This isn't a, a thing where you, you, you do the same thing over and over expecting the same result unless, well, I do the same thing over and over and I do expect the same result. I'm, I'm ex the definition of insanity is expecting a different result. I do the same thing over and over because I expect a result. The result is I get a name, a number, an email, and a database. I follow up and one day they will say yes. And sometimes they say now yes. And sometimes they say later yes. But I know my results are here because I can prove it. In the last two months of the year, more people than ever will say not right now, maybe later. Put them in a database. Start following up. Let's build some business. Don't be part of the purge. Don't be part of that wipeout. Don't be part of the Massive amounts of real estate agents. They say that what 90, 95% of the real estate agents out there are buyer's agents. They're talking about you on that whole commission thing. Are you capable of going out and getting listings? It's not that hard. If you're a buyer's agent and you've sold a lot of real estate as a buyer's agent, it's not that hard to transition. You've already got the guts to go out and meet people. You already got the, the knowledge of the market. All you need to do is learn a few key tools and we'll make you a listing agent. Let me help you list to last. Anyhow, thanks for listening. I hope I inspired you to get out there. Let's get back to work. Now, have you seen my amazing local market videos for my real estate business? In one word, Teradatum. They make videos branded to your brokerage and automatically update them every month with videos by zip code, county, city, and your hyper local market, and it's extremely affordable. Have you guys seen my website lately? Well, you should. It's absolutely gorgeous. I owe it all to Zentap. They will help you with your advertising using your MLS, IDX, and social media to attract an audience and engage your leads using sophisticated bots. Now, you're going to need a powerful CRM to manage all of this. And as you know, Mojo Selling Solutions is more than just a dialer. It's the most powerful CRM bar none. Mojo provides you expires for sell by owners, and that is the third list of data, along with email and mail campaigns. For more information on any of these products along with my personal coaching and training products, go to jamesfestini.com today. Now, get back to work.